I mean, what has it been? Let me check my streaming archive. They've all been pretty short. Like around the hour, maybe hour and a half mark. Let's play E4. Let's play another Italian. Let's see what we get. How much theory does my opponent know? Okay, there's some theory here. This is a bit of a risky line, but let's see what he what he will do. This is old school stuff. This is this is not known to be that good for white, but it's kind of fun. This is one of the first lines I ever studied in chess. Now you go queen e2 and you pile up against the knight. And they play bishop e6. This guy knows his theory. Now c6 is the move. White's idea is rook h3 here to try to trade and get the queen into h5. It's, it's a risky line, again. Yeah, this guy knows it. He he knows what's up. Queen a5 is now the move. Oof. Yikes. I've uh, got my work cut out for me. But for a blitz game, you know, we, we can play this. We can play this. We got this beautiful pawn on e6. Like, everything hinges around this pawn for white. Black's trying to... Black's have a pawn here, by the way. They're trying to keep our pieces out of the game. Okay, maybe here now. We can play queen f4. Um, hmm. Yeah, let's go here. Queen f4, I'm going to do this, I think. Tricky business. You feel it's impressive a non-title player can blitz this out. That shows good prep. Yeah, this player knows what they're doing. Because if you play a line like this, you might, you know, you might very well want to memorize this. You probably should. Okay, b6, maybe queen here. Attack this guy. Who says the Italian is boring, right? Yeah, this is called the Mahler attack. I know some of these moves don't make sense. But this is pretty hot theoretical stuff. I'm trying to create threats here. Castles, okay. Now I feel like I should invade with my queen. Let's see how he reacts. Rook e8, probably? Rook e8, followed by king d8, maybe? I'm starting to feel like I have some opportunities, though. Might play queen d6 also. Queen d6 is probably the safest move. But that loses this pawn. does play that. Yeah, I'll take this. Okay, so I can even up the material now. That's nice. Maybe here and wedge the bishop in. Just trying to be annoying. Mm-hmm. Guard this guy. Still complicated. Still a very complicated position. Okay, now he has rook f5 as an idea. I'm thinking if I can get around the back here somehow, but I don't know. This might be a little too slow. Might be worth playing, though. Let's try it. Definitely taking somewhat of a risk. Like he could, okay, I think he, oh, he's got F3, but I have the mate threat. Is it a mate threat? I don't know, I gotta try this. I must attempt it. Step here. Maybe it's a draw, that would be a funny draw.
The other move I was debating was playing f3. Before going queen f8, which is, in hindsight, I wish I would have done that. See, I don't see how I can play this for a win. Thank you, Damp from Mayo, gifting to Blue Pulse. <laughs> Especially with this coming. He controls that square. Oh, he's playing for a win. Okay, wow. I didn't expect him to do that. Can he escape my checks? Um, maybe he can. Rook f6, h4. What is happening? King here, I have check. Look at this position. This is nuts. Check. Okay, now I'm going to take this guy. He's going to promote. <laughs> Look at this. Queen e4, I have f3. I saw this. I saw this. The fork. <laughs> he played for the win. Wow, full credit to this guy. He went for it with knight c8. Truthfully, I didn't even see that knight c8 was a legit move. I don't know why I missed that, but... Maybe instinctively I thought it was risky, but I'm pretty sure my chest brain just totally disregarded knight c8. Whew. Look at this position right here. h4 check. It's all about who has the initiative here, right? Because, I mean, he's he's got the imminent e1 mate. So he played king h5 so that when I take... Uh, this is coming with check. I mean, maybe even here I could play this. Because I would be threatening queen g5 mate. But then f queen e4, f3 is not going to come with a fork. So I'm glad I threw this in. Wow. Crazy stuff here. I mean, look at this position. This is interesting. I'm threatening queen g5 mate. Now, again, he's up a queen for a, a bishop at this point. But I'm threatening queen g5 mate. I'm also threatening h3 mate and f3 mate. There are three different mate threats here and possibly d7 check. So I have a feeling I'm winning in this position. He doesn't have a good check. He could sack his queen in a couple different ways, but that's not enough. Like queen takes h2, I take, and I'm actually covering that square too. This looks winning. Let's see if back here on this sequence. So this so this is where he gave up the knight. Queen takes c8, king e7. Queen check, this is all forced. Check. Now he could go back if he wanted. He could try to repeat the position. But he wasn't about that. Again, like credit to this guy. He's playing for the victory. Check. Okay, he could go here. I saw I had one more check in that case. Maybe he goes king e5, I check there or something. He goes king f6. <laughs> it's very possible. That might be okay. Even if he loses that. Like, check this line out. Uh, here, let me show that. King f4. Check. Here. Check. He can block. I, man, this is just hard to assess. But even if we get this and I, I take this, I might still lose. I will still lose. He promotes with check and then mates me. I almost don't want to look at a computer eval because it just spoils things, but you knew, you knew that was inevitable. Yeah, Jay Wiz says, I'm curious about the engine. Me too. <laughs> yeah, so black is better the whole way here. Again, this is a risky line to play for white. It's a fun line. If you want a safer version of this, play bishop d2. That move is equal. Bishop d2 and take, knight takes, or bishop d2, knight takes e4. You trade and then you check and play queen b3 and win the knight. Those lines are roughly equal. This is known to be high risk, high reward. And this is all theory. I won't get into the theoretical weeds here, but every one of these moves is known to theory. And he played it flawlessly. Like, look how many games we're following at this point. 26 master games. White wins only a sliver of those games. You can't even see the percentage that white wins. 
So again, I wouldn't recommend this line, but it's it's good to know. <laughs> yeah, I, I did remember that queen takes f6 actually is a move here. You give up the rook with check. And there's some variation where because white is threatening uh, these moves, black castles and gives up the knight, but black is better here apparently. This is move 23, by the way, so getting a little deep in the theory. I played rookie two, though, which has been played a couple times, three times. Okay, now finally we're out of book. And it's already my first move <laughs> or so out of book. I'm already minus two, minus three. Well, I'm sure we can analyze this game for a long time, but what was missed here? Okay. Computer doesn't like castling by him. I also wasn't a big fan of B B6. I felt like maybe black had better there. B6 looked a little bit weakening. But okay, I got the pawn back. All right, I mean, black's better evidently, but nothing crazy's going on yet. Yeah, and now I should have played F3. I, I did consider this move, but I couldn't resist. Once I saw this idea, I couldn't resist going for it. But I completely missed that rook f5 f3 check was possible. Bishop e8 idea? We'll see that when hopefully coming up. Yeah, f3, king h1. Oh, that's funny. It wants me to go king f1 here and actually allow him to take with check. I would never do that. <laughs> that seems tantamount to, res to resignation. Paul R. Hansen, thank you for subbing. 10 months. Thank you for tuning in from Denmark. Okay, so this is evidently winning for him. I thought we were just headed for a perpetual. But knight c8 is winning. Wow. Very computer-like move, king f1, says fire sword. Yeah, computer's just trying to minimize the damage. It sees ahead, it knows that this is winning. Okay, so this is all, yeah, decisive for him. And now rook f6 is the move that gives it away. Wow. Is king f4 the only winning move? Let's increase the number of lines here. No, king h6 wins, as does king h5. Although that those two moves repeat, it seems. Because if he goes to the h file, I can, I can check. He's got to take the bull by the horns. We were looking at this line. Check. I got to keep the checks going again, otherwise this is winning. King f3. Oh, okay. Didn't see that the first time around. King f3. Now, if he would have pulled this off, I would be publishing this YouTube video, future YouTube video, because I'm recording this on Twitch right now. But I would publish this in his honor with like some sort of King March theme title. Wow. Check here. It's almost mate, but he takes the pawn. Check. It's almost mate, but he has King f3. <laughs> And I guess I'm running out of ammunition. I mean, this is cold-blooded. This is some computer stuff right here. I can check anywhere here. Queen g3, he takes, I guess. Queen check. Goes king e1, and this is mate in six already, the computer's calling it. My useless bishop here, useless pawn. Yeah, crazy line, not, uh, says Niall Hart. Agreed. Thank you, Parm, by the way, for the 16 months. The, blit the immortal king walk in Blitz. That's what it would have been. But he blocked with his rook. Well, how does this go to if check? Okay, king e5 is also winning, but king f3 is exquisite. And I run out of ammunition. That pawn is going to be too strong, and his king survives. Instead, rook f6, and yeah, fortunately I had h4. Deflection move. It's all about initiative here. Every move matters. Do you guys know when people say... This is a sharp position, or we're playing sharp chess, or just use the word sharp. This is what they're talking about. I mean, this is uber sharp, meaning the value of the move is extremely high right now. Whoever has the move will get probably their desired results or uh, some very favorable operation. This is not a, a type of position where you can relax for a move and play something slow unless you, you have a very good reason to do so. But yeah, h4. I, I'm out of good checks to give. f4, you can take with the queen. So we call up the h-pawn. We call up Harry. 
And now he has to play the difficult move, king f5. Yeah, and actually allow this move with check. Allow e7. And I did mention this in the game. I, I was excited about this line because I briefly saw in like the time scramble that I could potentially promote and guard the e1 square at the same time. But apparently he can go rook e6 and it's still game on here. The computer says roughly equal. King g2 best move now. Or e8 and then king g2. Craziness. This is somehow a draw. <laughs> Look at that. So he must play king f5 to draw in this position. Any other move loses. Yeah, and the computer validates it. King h5, check again. Only move for me. Yeah, if I take here right away, it's not as good because of what I was mentioning where queen e4 would not allow f3 with a fork. Yeah, see ya, KJ Foster. Thank you for tuning in. Yeah, that last line, I, <laughs> I don't know exactly how that ends up in a draw. We won't investigate it, but some insane stuff right there. So again, check. King g4 is the only move, and I'm glad I had the wherewithal with my 11 seconds to his 5 in this no increment game <laughs> to take allow him to queen with check and play king g2 and white is winning thanks to the various threats here of mate and one incredible wow queen d to e5 or queen e to e5 so the engine says he should play something like this wait what is going on here Oh, wow. F3 is not... Okay, I'm hallucinating. F3 and H3 were not mate threats. They were made in two threats, but not made in one, because the king has access to H5. So I guess the point of this is that they're guarding the H8 square. So just to show you what I mean, like, if you played a passing move, yeah, queen G5 is mate, but these were not mates. I was mistaken. But this, I guess, would be a mate threat. <laughs> Sorry, it's getting a little late. So I guess that's the point of these two moves. Wow. But those allow, let's say either one, allow e7 check. And the, the bishop that's been buried for the, the, the last half of this game, like finally gets to influence things. And this is evidently winning. If take, check, here, take with check. Okay, and I can promote, or I guess the computer finds force mate. Very nifty. Instead, he played this. Okay, queen d2 is also a pretty interesting try to attempt to pin here and maybe block here. Oh, is this the bishop e8 move someone was mentioning in the chat? Look at this. This is still winning for white. <laughs> Plus 27, 28. Bishop a4 is the best move. <laughs> Look at this game. Bishop a4. I guess the point being to threaten bishop d1 to deflect the queen and renew the threat of queen g5. And this is made in 15. Obviously made in 15. I don't know how it's impossible to miss that. <laughs> bishop a4. Bonkers move. Wow. Wow. And the other operation is something to do with bishop e8. What is the point of bishop e8? And why is this plus 99 or made in something? Is it just threatening queen takes g6, king takes h4, queen h5, mate? Let's play a dummy move for black. Ah. Okay, h3 as well. Yeah, that, that is a mate threat, along with h3, and then this one. Which, remember, if I play h3 here, king h5, this is not quite mate. Because of queen h6, that's the point of queen e2. It would have been really interesting to play this with more time against this player. Like, if we had, I don't know, 10 minutes or something each from this position after king g2... I mean, I know black is objectively losing, but if black finds one of these moves, it's still pretty complicated. 
Especially if I have to find bishop a4 or bishop e8. But bishop a4 is just... <laughs> the eval bar is getting tired? Yeah, it's just oscillating. Amazing. That's... Mwah! That's an exquisite move. Pretty sure that's the idea. Again, like d4. Yeah, bishop d1. It's made on the next move. Can't go to h5. What if he goes to h5 proactively? Oh, then I guess I play bishop d1 anyways. Queen takes d1, queen g5. Different mate this time. Hmm. Queen's no longer guarding that square. Okay, some really cool lines there. I'm going to cut the analysis off here. I think we could spend 30 minutes or an hour on uh, that sequence. But thanks to my opponent, opponent of you, very fittingly named. Thanks to opponent of you. And if you're interested, take a look at this line sometime. It's fascinating. D5, I know this looks weird after black has given up, or white has given up a piece to play D5 and not even take the bishop back. But this is called the Mahler attack. This is mainline Italian game stuff. Again, not a line I would necessarily recommend for white, but you can look into it. Some cool complications there. So thanks to everyone on YouTube for watching this and also the live viewers on Twitch.